Technoid. Uh, before we start the video, I just wanted to announce uh, my microphone, uh, unfortunately, is not working. I have called the company up for warranty, so I will be out of uh, microphone for a while, so ignore the bad audio quality. But welcome back, everybody, and guys, we did it. 700 subscribers. Um, I don't look too enthusiastic, but honestly, guys, I really am excited. Thank you to 700 of you that are out there that have subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much. Uh, you have no idea how much this means to me as a YouTuber, as a small creator, and just watching this process of starting with 50 subscribers to 100 subscribers, and to see me grow from one year with ending with 100 subscribers from last year, and now to grow so much, it, it truly is an amazing feeling, and it is one of the greatest things I could have ever asked for. And I just want to take this time to thank each and every one of you. And I know I normally always say the next goal is 800, but you know what? I'm only 300 away from 1,000. We are 300 away. No more I, it is we. We are 300 away from 1,000. So the new goal is 1,000 subscribers. If we hit 1,000 subs, I will do a special thank you video by personally taking the time to greet my subscribers one-on-one -on -one in a live 1,000 subscriber video special. I'll explain that later on as we get closer to 1,000. But enough of that said, let's get right into the video. So story number one is one that had me laughing because I really cannot believe this is an actual story. <laughs> Xiaomi made a smartwatch. Now, Xiaomi, as you know, is one of the big Chinese players in the smartphone market like Huawei, Oppo, and other brands out there. But Xiaomi has been under the radar, kind of in the radar, but this one was funny because Xiaomi basically made an Apple Watch clone and it took everything that the Apple Watch is and tried to be and failed at that. They, they failed at making an Apple Watch clone. Like, look at this. this. Like, how can this not, like, tell me, how does that not look like an Apple Watch? How are you gonna defend something like that as a smartwatch? Now, I'm pretty sure as a smartwatch, it does its functions well. But one of the main things about the Apple Watch was that it had a lot of compelling things. This thing, on the other hand, is basically just, oh, it looks like the Apple Watch. There is nothing here to me that would significantly make me want to go out and buy this if I had a Xiaomi phone. It's bad enough Xiaomi phones are already ripping off the iPhone's notch, which they're still doing, by the way, but they're trying to get rid of that Fed trend. But seriously, this is the thing about Android smartphone makers that I have had a problem with last year. Everybody was taking Apple's notch, everybody was taking the design and just kept running with it and just really just adopt the notch and basically just made iPhone 10 ripoffs. And now they're doing the same thing with wearables. Although to be fair, Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2 are a whole different story. Which by the way, I will be getting my hands on an Active 2, so stay tuned for that unboxing. But seriously, Xiaomi, why? Like I get it, you're in China, you know, you, you, you got a big market, people are gonna buy it, but do you really have to take Apple's design? It's bad enough the Apple Watch don't even look good. Why would you take that? Why not take the Google... Uh, oh, okay, that's right. They don't have a watch. Why not just take the Galaxy Active 2? Why not just take anything from Fossil or anybody? Why the Apple Watch? I don't know. Like, it's not the first time they've taken stuff. I, I, don't, I don't even want to talk about it. But... It, it's funny because people will still say Android smartphone makers are great. But when I see shit like this, I'm like... You really want to say they're great after copying an Apple product? So, that's that. Uh, that's story number one. Story number two, let's focus now to Samsung. So Samsung right now has been under the radar with anything since the One UI 2.0 has come out with their software development, beta, kind of whatever they had. And so far, haven't heard much, but they've recently come out that Samsung is working to improve their foldable flagship line. Now, the Galaxy Fold wasn't the best really smartphone and by no means is it a perfect phone but it literally did the job with innovation taking a phone and a tablet whether the execution was done right the concept was cool but I don't know if it was executed well well Samsung hopes to change that they want to expand the market with foldables and to that I say are you fucking crazy it's bad enough you're not gonna even make money off of the Galaxy Fold you wasted so much money trying to get this one product what makes you think you can expand on more like, okay, the Razer phone, not the Razer, uh, the Motorola Razer, that supposed clamshell design phone, that looks interesting. See, that's a good foldable design. If that's what Samsung is going for, which they did talk about, that's a different story. But what are you going to do? Make the S Galaxy Fold Lite? Make the Galaxy Fold E? 
make the Galaxy Fold 5G, how many folds do you expect people to buy? And you price them so high, obviously you're paying for two things, but do you really think people are gonna pay money, like their hard earned two grand or more on a foldable device? Do, like, think about that for a second. Do you really expect people to pay that much money? Like, I don't, I don't understand why Samsung doesn't understand. And now, if it makes the lineup simpler, that's a different story. Cause you know, you wanna phase out the Note series. Although the Note series on its own is a fine series, but there are so much things distinguishing them from the S series, there's really no point in getting a Note. So it would make sense for them to just combine the Note and the Plus version of the S10, make that kind of like the Note. So you have the S10, the S10 Plus, and then the foldables will take the place of the Note cause that's more of a compelling thing. But still, you can't expand a foldable market when people aren't in the market to buy foldables yet. Nobody can adapt it that fast and go, oh, this is the next best thing. Now we gotta wait and see how the Motorola Razr does, but Samsung, you really need to stop trying to shoot for the stars, because you're not gonna land on a star, you're gonna land on the moon. So just stop. And last story up of the day is Google. Now this one is not really a controversial thing, it's just something I wanted to kind of point out. Because Google, not only did you make a very bad phone, but you made a very bad built phone. So Jerry Rig Everything, who is one of my favorite tech YouTubers, uh, he does some great breakdowns. I love his videos. The only thing I hate is that every video he makes is sponsored, so there's annoying fucking crossovers. Jerry, can there be just one video where there's no sponsor? I get you gotta make money from this, and that's your best way of making it, but dude, you get monetization every single day on YouTube. You can afford to buy as many smartphones as you want. You get millions of views, so come on. Enough of the sponsorships. But anyway... He made a video about the Google Pixel 4, and when he bent it, as he normally does with the bend test, that is where we see the fatal flaw in the Pixel. So apparently the antenna cut cutouts are very bad. They're covered up within this, this finish that uh, Google did, and it's really bad because those antenna points are weak. Now some have pointed this back to the iPad Pro with the iPad Pro's antenna line. And honestly, all I've got to say about this is Sam uh, Google users, just be careful. You know, when you put it in your pocket, if you're gonna sit down in, in jeans or something, just be careful. Because the way he bent it, obviously you do need a lot of force, so it's not like, you know, it's a small bend like the iPad. But if you put enough pressure on that, that could break it. Now, it did work the phone, but I just wanted to put that out there because, you know, it's always important to see the flaws in design and craftsmanship when it comes into a smartphone. And I always say, Jerry Rig is the guy to go to. So definitely check his channel out, check that video out. It is a great video. And that is it for today's episode of Tech Noise. So guys, thank you so much for watching, again, 700 subscribers, thank you guys so much. We are 300 away from 1,000. Let's hit for that 1,000. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, if you video, hit the dislike button. That is it for today's episode. Thank you for watching and peace.